Loyola Law Professor Jessica Levinson joins us now to talk a little bit about the former president's legacy. Good, Good morning. morning, Professor. Thanks for being here. So how do you think George H.W. Bush was treated after he left the White House? I think as much more kindly than when he was in the White mm -hmm. House. So there's a number of people all across the aisle this morning, and I think this is not just kind of false sense of saying something nice when people die who really say he was a wonderful man mm -hmm. and he represented a different culture in Washington and he represented frankly a different era in politics period and I think that's very genuine so when we're looking back at George H. Walker Bush mm -hmm. and even not that long ago in the whole span of history I think people are recognizing he was a very skilled diplomat he was a very skilled bureaucrat mm -hmm. and he was frankly a very modest person and that is just so it's such a different universe from the tone of politics we see and I think a lot of people frankly feel sentimental this morning a little nostalgic yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's go a little deeper on that because the when President Bush was in office the political climate in Washington was very different than it is today let's talk a little bit more about the whole climate change so I think that for Obviously, it's a number of factors. It's never just one person. But if you look at the tone that we see from senators, from members of Congress, it's very different from what we used to see in the 80s and even the early 90s when uh, President Bush was president. So now we have, if you look at the charts, there's extreme polarization where we don't have our representatives as much in the middle as, frankly, we are. We don't have as much bipartisan consensus. We don't have as many lawmakers who are, frankly, friends on either side of the aisle and we don't have a commander-in-chief who says things like I might not be a vi visionary but I want to be a good leader mm -hmm. and I want to be friends to people on both sides of the aisle mm -hmm. I think it was we can talk about all the contributing factors but I think President Bush was able to be in office and set a tone in an era that was frankly kind of better suited towards him and was a more modest era. Mm -hmm. Similar things to what people said about Senator John McCain when he passed not too long ago. Of course, President Bush was the patriarch of the Bush family and few families have had such a wide ranging impact on American politics. I mean, they're a powerhouse family, a political dynasty in this country, wouldn't you say, Professor? Oh, I think there's no denying that. And I think that part of his political redemption, frankly, was seeing his sons mm -hmm. uh, become president and mm -hmm. become governor in Florida. Mm -hmm. And so his son achieved something he couldn't, which is being reelected. Yeah. And so if you look at the history of American families and political dynasties, I think you have to go back more than 100 years, frankly, to find a family who have you know, been part of public service in such high levels mm -hmm. for so long. And I'm not sure that we've seen the last of this. If you look at the next generation, mm -hmm. you see a lot of people who are either interested in civil service or want to become part of the current political atmosphere. So. I think you have to look back and talk about people like John Adams, frankly, hmm. to really find a family that has had such an influence over American politics. Yeah. All right. Well, we want to switch gears a little bit. Uh, President Trump is set to meet with Chinese's uh, Xi Jinping uh, next week. Let's talk a little bit about that meeting, what you're expecting. Well, I'm expecting, frankly, is that we're going to see a narrative that says it was a success either way. And this mm -hmm. is what we see a lot of times coming out of these meetings, which is, and President Trump is not alone in doing this. He'll say, we had a great meeting. We talked about a lot of really productive things. I look forward to working with them. What I don't necessarily expect to see is a lot of specifics, because there are some concrete issues that are facing our two countries. I expect to hear something like, we, we're on our way to making a great deal. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's always the proof is in the pudding. And so the question will be months down the road, do we have any sort of concrete agreement on the really pressing issues facing our two countries? All right, Professor Jessica Levinson, thank you for your insight. Thank as you. always, always a lot to talk about. Thanks for being here.